Hi, I'm John. Welcome to Premium Builds. What would you do if I told you that for five dollars and five minutes of your time, you could drop your CPU temperatures by five degrees? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how. This is, I promise, one of the easiest and most effective modifications I've ever done in terms of PC temperatures. It may seem a little bit sketchy messing around with a CPU socket, and to be fair it is, but I'm going to show you how you can do it safely. I first became aware of this problem because I've been working on some data sets for i7-12700K temperatures with a range of different CPU coolers. And in gathering those data sets and looking at the numbers, I really wasn't happy with some of the temperatures that some of the coolers that should have been very capable were achieving with that CPU. Having read around, there's been information online about people who've experienced very high temperatures with CPUs and uh, made modifications to try and address it. But it wasn't something I felt had affected me because I hadn't seen any CPU temperatures really out of what I would expect of normal range for a 200 watt CPU. However, with a number of CPU coolers reading temperatures too high, I decided to investigate further and have a look at doing this modification, and I was absolutely astounded at the results. It really is an impressive modification, and there clearly is a bit of a defect in the way that the mounting retention system works on uh, Alder Lake CPUs, but it's so easy to rectify yourself that there's no reason not to do it. There's a few telltale signs you can look out for. One of them, of course, is very high temperatures or temperatures you can't control even by lifting your CPU cooler fan speed. And also, if you remove your cooler and look at the cold plate and the surface of the CPU, you may notice a band of thermal paste across the middle of the CPU, or perhaps even an hourglass pattern. And I've observed this a number of times now with the CPUs, having installed them on a number of occasions with different coolers. If you look at these images, you can see that the thermal paste leaves an impression of the low spot across the middle of the CPU. And that means that there's a very slight gap there that thermal paste is having to transfer that heat across it when in reality it should be near metal to metal contact between the surface of the CPU and the cold plate of your CPU cooler. Now the fix for this is very easy but it does require a little bit of preparation. First things you're going to need are the tools. You'll need a Torx T20 screwdriver or bit and it does need to be exactly that size and specification. If you don't have a Torx T20 bit or screwdriver, do go out and buy one for this job. You don't want to try and get away with an Allen key or a crosshead screwdriver because if you slip off of the screw head and onto the surface of the motherboard, you could damage it irreparably. The washers you're going to need are basically small round washers with between 0.5 and one millimeter maximum thickness. I wouldn't go any larger than one millimeter because if you lift the retention bracket too high, you actually prevent the cooler cold plate from hitting the surface of the CPU cleanly. I've actually had some really good results just with thin plastic motherboard protection washers that come with some AIOs or coolers. They lift the retention bracket just enough to lessen the tension it places on the CPU. So I'm going to give some precautions prior to attempting this job because it is possible to ruin your motherboard if you get it badly wrong. Please don't do it if you don't feel confident having watched this video of exactly what it involved. Make sure you've got the right tools for the job and don't attempt it until you have got those tools together to do it. Work in a nice organized environment. Make sure that you can lay the motherboard completely flat. You can do it inside the case, but I would advise if at all possible, remove the motherboard so you've got a nice open working area and you're not fiddling around inside a PC case to try and get this job done. You're going to need to hold the back plate of the CPU socket in place whilst you work, so make sure you have access there as well. Please do protect that CPU socket at all times. Whenever it's exposed, put the CPU in it before you start any work around so that if you do drop a screw or one of the brackets, you're not going to damage those incredibly delicate pins inside the motherboard socket. And finally, after you've done this modification, use a flat surface that fits inside the CPU mounting area just to check that you haven't lifted the retention bracket proud of the surface of the CPU around the sides. If you've done that, the CPU cooler won't make proper contact with the surface of the CPU and you'll just be creating yourself a new problem. So with those precautions in mind, let's move on to getting this modification done. So let's get started. I'll show you how to do this and keep the socket safe. So first of all, open your CPU socket, flip this back and start by placing your CPU in the socket and just resting it there. This is why you need the case or the motherboard lying down to do it. That keeps the socket protected so that if you drop anything, it won't go onto those pins and break your motherboard. Next, we're just going to use our Torx T20 bit, and I'll demonstrate on this top bracket first of all, because it's easier. And use our Torx bit, and just unscrew these. They're not, they're not done up tight, actually. They come out easy, nice and easily. You lift your screw out and out of the way. And this other one as well. And that just lifts the bracket off like that. And you can see the surface of the motherboard there. And then all we're going to do is take our washer and place them 
around each of those holes. So that now they're providing additional height for that bracket. Place the bracket back in place. Place the screw in the hole gently. And then just screw it down until it catches. And then proceed to do the same on the other side. Just like that. And you don't do these up too tight, just do them up kind of finger tight the way you felt and found them. Just like that. And that is the bracket install complete. And then obviously you can repeat that for this hinged section. There's two more screws here. And for even pressure, you want to remove that as well and do the same process. This one is a little bit fiddlier. And this is where you can see there are in fact traces just down around this, which is where I would use a, a nylon washer rather than a, a metal one, given the choice. Again. That's those screwed up, and then you can close this, remove your CPU socket cover. And closing it like that, you should find that there's significantly less tension on this bar than you felt the previous times. That's the washer mod complete, and that's now putting a lot less stress across this middle section of the CPU, and it should keep it a good deal flatter. It's worth checking when you've done this modification, I'm just using the straight edge of a piece of Lego because it fits into the socket here. What you want to do is check that the surround of the heatsink isn't any higher than the surface of your CPU. Because if it is, if you haven't actually moved this down far enough, you've lifted it too high with the washer mod, then the CPU cooler cold plate will not be able to contact the surface of the CPU. So make sure that this is touching the CPU before it touches either side across your CPU and you should find then that your temps are much reduced you've got much better temperatures like I say if you haven't got metal washers I have actually just found just the, the you know these are about probably 0.2 or 0.3 of a millimeter thick um, but they lift this just enough that it prevents the stresses bending the CPU in the same way and I've had really good results just with a very very thin plastic washer that sticks around that hole raises this surround um, and does the job really well. So um, that's what I would recommend to use. If not, thin nylon washers, half a mil to one mil maximum thickness, and you will get this fantastic reduction in temperatures on Alder Lake because it stops it bending your CPU like a banana. You can see the results of this modification for me in these before and after graphs. I dropped CPU temperatures between five and 10 degrees using this modification alone on two different all-in-one liquid coolers. So there we go, guys, that's the modification. It made massive difference to the temperatures on my i7-12700K. I'd be fascinated to hear how you get on with it, whether you see similar results to us. And whilst I haven't noticed any particular problems with i3 or i5 CPUs in the testing that I've been doing, I would say that this is a must-do modification for anyone running a K-series CPU or an i7 or an i9 CPU. I'd also do this modification as a first action if you do notice your CPU temperatures are a little bit high. I really hope you found this video useful. Please let us know how this modification works out for you, whether you see similar results to the ones that we did. Please also do check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of advice and guides on there, part selections and component choices to help you get the very best out of your next PC build.